All children naturally assume and believe we live on a level, stationary earth, with the sun, moon, and stars revolving over and around us, because that is what we actually experience every day of our lives. No children before heliocentric indoctrination would ever assume or believe they lived on a tilting, wobbling, spinning, oblate spheroid, hurtling incredible speeds through infinite vacuum space, because none of that is present in our lived experience. Only after thorough indoctrination through mainstream media and government education do children slowly begin to abandon their actual, natural, everyday lived experience of the world and adopt the new imaginative model espoused by their teachers and televisions. I remember the moment we began studying the solar system in elementary school and were taught that Earth was a giant blue ball floating in space, spinning circles around the sun. The entire concept sounded ridiculous to me as I sat clearly still and motionless in my chair while being told the ground beneath me was actually tilting, wobbling, rotating and revolving many thousands of miles per hour in various directions. I could see the flat horizon out the window, at the beach, and from mountain tops, clearly never curving downwards in the slightest, yet I was being told the earth was a ball, and that if I dug a hole straight down far enough, I would pop out in China and find more sky below me. When the teacher then insisted that everyone in Australia was actually living their lives upside down relative to people on the northern hemisphere, I remember raising my hand confused and asking, why don't people in the southern hemisphere fall off of the ball? To which my teacher readily replied with the heliocentric model's one-word magical answer for all critical questions. Gravity. An invisible force, strong enough to hold the world's oceans, buildings, and people stuck to a rapidly spinning ball, while simultaneously weak enough to allow birds, bugs, smoke, steam, and helium balloons to completely evade its grasp. As a child, I didn't have the vocabulary, confidence, education, or experience to contest anything my teachers and textbooks were claiming but my bewildered brain never fully bought the model being taught, and there always remained a nagging inkling in the back of my mind that Earth was not as they said. During college, I wrote my first book, Asbestos Hid, in which I outlined several problems with Big Bang cosmology, and synchronistically chose the Flammarion Flat Earth painting for the cover of the book. After graduating, I began studying conspiracies in depth and regularly searched the internet for information on geocentricity and the Flat Earth. The first links to show up were always from the Flat Earth Society, which made ridiculous claims like saying Earth is a flat disk constantly rising upwards through space at 9.8 meters per second squared to explain away the effects of so-called gravity. This and other spurious claims made on their website actually turned me off from researching the Flat Earth for a time. I soon continued my search, however, and began to find that there were actually entire books written about the Flat Earth in the 19th century. The first two volumes I read on the subject were Dr. Samuel Robotham's Zetetic Astronomy, Earth Not a Globe, and William Carpenter's 100 Proofs Earth is Not a Globe. These books were full of factual information and evidence, nothing like the farcical, satirical Flat Earth Society and their website loaded with nonsense theories. For example, these 19th century Flat Earthers claimed the Earth was motionless and gravity didn't exist at all, citing abundant proof for each, unlike the modern Flat Earth Society, which claims without any proof that gravity does exist, and that the flat earth is a disk shooting vertically straight upwards through space forever. In 2008, I finished writing and published my next book, The Atlantean Conspiracy, which included a full chapter on geocentricity, and a few quotes from flat earthers denouncing NASA's supposed moon landings. At this point, I was convinced of geocentricity and leaning heavily towards flat earth cosmology. Alex Jones was the biggest voice in the conspiracy community at the time, and in the hopes of bringing more attention to this most important subject, I sent to Infowars Dr. Robotham's book, Earth Not a Globe, along with my book, The Atlantean Conspiracy. Their producer, Rob Dew, messaged me back, saying he would run it by Alex, and I never heard from either of them ever again. Several weeks later, however, 
It was made clear that Alex did get the message, because he laughed and said on air, I have actually been contacted by some flat earthers, saying I'm covering up the fact that it's some Atlantean conspiracy, which is the name of my book and website. Uh, well, don't. well, I mean, the, I mean, the, I mean, the Earth being flat—that that's clearly ridiculous. Though I've actually been contacted by some flat earthers saying I'm covering up the fact that it's it's some Atlantean conspiracy. For the next several years, I continued researching and digging the far reaches of the internet for content, and finally found and compiled a large collection of old books, lectures, pamphlets, and newspaper articles exposing the flat Earth. I have since made most of these into free downloadable PDFs and or audiobooks, which I will leave links to below in the description box of this video. It turns out there was a veritable flat earth renaissance at the turn of the 19th century, with many incredible books written on the subject that were very nearly buried and lost to history. Here is a list of these old books and authors, all of which and more you can find linked below and on our IFERS forum. Zetetic Astronomy Earth Not a Globe by Dr. Samuel Robotham. 100 Proofs Earth is Not a Globe by William Carpenter. Zetetic Cosmogony by Thomas Winship. Terra Firma by David Wardlaw Scott. Kings Dethroned by Gerard Hickson. Heaven and Earth by Gabrielle Henriette. The Enlightenment of the World by John Abizade. The Sea Earth Globe and its monstrous hypothetical motions by Albert Smith. The Terrestrial Plane by Frederick Cook. Is Earth a Globe Whirling in Space by Carl Smith. Chart and Compass, Sextant and Sundial, Latitude and Longitude, Plumbline and Pendulum, Globe or Plane by the London Zetetic Society. Does the Earth Rotate? No. By William Edgell. The Shape of the World by A. E. Skellum. The Shape of the Earth by Arthur White. And The Earth a Plane by John Quinlan. After reading these books, it became obvious to me beyond any shadow of doubt that Earth was indeed a motionless level plane and not a wobbling spinning ball. As you can imagine, even with all the other conspiracies I had been researching and exposing, this particular revelation completely blew my mind, as it is literally the biggest and most fundamental deception conceivable which has successfully duped nearly the entirety of humanity for centuries. I immediately felt an incredible, invisible weight on my shoulders to find a way to expose this lie to the world, and began planning what would be my eventual explosion of flat earth material onto the internet in November of 2014. Fearing for my life, I wrote my entire book, The Flat Earth Conspiracy, in secret, along with my The Flat Earth Conspiracy documentary, several other early videos, and lined up many radio interviews with the intention of mass-releasing the flat earth information I had been creating and compiling for the past years all at once, so that in case anything were to happen to me, at least I made a big splash and got my information out. I have received several death threats which I have shown on my blog, but so far nothing has come from them. Since 2014, I have restarted the original International Flat Earth Research Society, made hundreds of flat earth videos, done dozens of interviews, written three more flat earth books, released three flat earth music albums, and narrated a flat earth feature film, all available for free to help spread this most important truth. In that time, I've had over 40 videos and three entire YouTube channels banned, three Facebook accounts banned, been permabanned from LinkedIn, had my music banned from CD Baby, Bandcamp, and TuneCore, my first album banned from all streaming services, banned from PewTube, Reddit, VK, Ike Forums, Prison Planet Forums, and Above Top Secret Forums, and had my entire website, blog, and IFERS hacked and deleted. Luckily, they cannot silence someone who refuses to give up and keeps coming back, and I have vowed never to stop my activism until the NWO dies, or I do. If you haven't already, please follow the link in the description box to all the books and other media I mentioned. If everyone actually took the time to read these old books, humanity would awaken from this deception overnight. 
It is a travesty that none of these books are read or even mentioned in schools. Instead, children are force-fed the heliocentric globe model with complete assurance that only our ignorant ancient ancestors were stupid enough to believe Earth was a stationary plane, when in fact the exact opposite is the truth, and only the modern manipulated man could be so moronic.